Hi, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to display user appointments like this using the Listing Grid widget. The first thing I recommend is make sure that you have a handful of appointments already inside the system. So as you can see right here underneath Jet Appointments, I already have four of these test appointments right here. So this is gonna make it where we can visually see these changes while we're creating them in real time. Now we can jump right into the tutorial on how to create this listing. So in this situation, we're gonna have it where we're gonna show the ID, the name of the person that you know made the appointment, the provider, the service that they signed up for, the date and the time. So now let's just jump into the back end and show you how easy it is to set up. First thing we need to do is just jump over into Jet Engine and click on Listings. Once you're there, you can click this button right here where it says Add New. And underneath the listing source, we just need to go down into User Appointments. So this is just gonna pull in all of the data using you know, your Jet Appointments data right here. So just give it a name. So in this, in this case, I'm just gonna call it uh, Appointments, uh, listing or something like that. And we are gonna be using Elementor in this case. So now we just click create listing item. And now inside of here is where we're gonna be dropping in all of this dynamic data right here. So the name and the service provider and all of that. So each one of these is its own dynamic widget. And then it's just pulling in the data from you know the database. So the very first one we're gonna do is if you just go in here and just type in dynamic, you're gonna see this one right here. We're just gonna be using this widget throughout the rest of this tutorial. So just click and drag that in here. And underneath source, you can just keep this right here where it says post term, you just keep it on that one. And then underneath the object field is where we're gonna be pulling in all the data. And if you keep scrolling down right here where it says appointment, this is where all of this data is gonna be stored. So if we just scroll down here and just click on ID. So as you can see, as soon as you pull that in, it just pulls in the number one. So what it's gonna do is if I go back into my Jet Appointments, as you can see right here underneath Appointments, this is gonna pull in the very first one. So all of the data that's gonna be in the listing grid is just gonna be this one right here. So ID number one, the service provider, and my name and everything right here. So if I go back into here, and all we have to do is if you wanna make this you know, a lot more user friendly, we're gonna put the word ID dash one. So in order to do that, you just click this button right here where it says customize field output. So this is using the macro right here. So whatever you know, this value is gonna be one, you could put something in front of it. So in this case, ID space dash. So now on the front end of the website, it's a lot more user friendly. So it's not just you know, the number one. So you could put anything in front of here. So in this case, we're just gonna call it ID one. The next field we can drop in is the username. So same thing, if you go back here and just type in dynamic, you can pull in the dynamic field right underneath that. And just like the first one, keep it at this very first post term user. And then underneath user, you can see underneath appointment, you just wanna click a uh, username. So in this case, it's my name right here. And just like the first one, you can customize how it's gonna look. So in this case, let's just say name space dash. So now it's gonna say, you know, name dash Mark Crowell. Now I'm gonna show you how you can pull in the provider and have it where this will hyperlink to, in this case, the provider. So if you click on this, it'll automatically go to the page for that doctor. So in order to do that, very similar, you just have to change a few different options right here. So just like the very first two, just go ahead and just type in dynamic field, pull that in. And just like the other ones, make sure this first one's selected underneath object field, go down into appointment. And then in this case, we're calling it provider. So if you just click on provider, you can see it's pulling in the number. So that's not very user friendly. So we need to do a few things to convert that into a link and more of a user friendly title. So. First thing is underneath filter field output, you just click that on and underneath callback, you're gonna have a whole bunch of options inside here. So this is gonna be very useful later. We can show you how to format the date and time and all of that. So let's go ahead and underneath callback, this one right here where it says get post slash page link. So just click that right here. So now that's automatically going to make that into a hyperlink and change it to you know a user friendly rather than like 160. And just like the other ones, you can click customize field output and we're gonna type in provider space dash. 
So now it's provider and then this is now hyperlinked. The next one we're gonna do is service. So this is the service they signed up for. And you can save a little bit of time. In this case, you can just duplicate this last one we just created for, for provider. You can just do that. And instead of the object field uh, for provider, we can select service. So now it's automatically gonna change to brain and spine cancer rate here. And we just need to change this word provider into something like service. So now it's service and then that right there for the, you know, the service they signed up for. Now we can move on to the date and time. So just like the other ones, let's pull in a dynamic field. So just type in dynamic field, pull that underneath service. And in this case, um, we're gonna of course keep the top one the same. And if you go underneath appointment, you can click right here where it says date. So when you pull that in, it's gonna pull in you know the date uh, like this string right here. So that's not very user friendly. So just like the other ones up here, we can change the format. So if you click under filter field output, click that on. Underneath the callback, scroll down into this one right here. So it should be the very first one actually. So format date. And when you do that, it's automatically going to do it in this format. And if you click this button right here, it's going to give you a whole bunch of different options that you can use. So if we go into here, this is the official documentation from WordPress. And if you scroll down, these are all of the different formats that you can do uh, inside this callback. So as you can see, it gives you exactly what all of these letters and numbers mean. But if you scroll down right here, this is what's going to be the most useful is you just copy and paste these things in here. So if you want it to be formatted a little bit different, you could just copy this right here. And in the time in the next part, we're gonna you know change out that right here. So in this case, everything looks good as this right here. I like it where, at least here in the United States, we do you know the, the month, the date, and then the year. And if we just go down into here, we can also just add in the word date in front of it. So it's a little bit easier to know what you're looking at. So date slash, and then August 4th, 2023. And now the last one we can do is time. So what I recommend is just duplicating the one we just created for date. And inside here, you just need to change a few things. So instead of the object field as date, go down into slot, and that's going to show you the time. So what we need to do is now go down here. And instead of this format right here, we can go back into this page and select this one, for example. So like I said, this is gonna be very useful. I recommend bookmarking this if you're gonna be doing these type of things where you can change how things are gonna be laid out, you know, the format strings. So in this case, I wanna show it, you know, just showing the hour and the minute and then, you know, AM or PM. So if you just go ahead and replace that with the one we just copied, now you can see it's gonna say 9 AM. And then underneath here, instead of date, we can just type in the word time. And that's it. So now you can hit update now that's saved out as your listing. So now we can go onto a page and show you how easy it is to tie in your listing grid and display this information. Here we are on a new page and if you wanna pull in a listing grid, you can just start typing in the word listing right here and just pull in the widget right here called listing grid. Next under the listing, just do a search for the one you just created. So in this case, it was called appointments listing and that's it. You're gonna automatically notice that it's gonna pull in um, your four uh, appointments that I already have in the system. So if you go underneath right here where it says appointments query, this is where you can have a little more control. So in this case, we can choose, you know, what status it is that these are in. So if you only want to show completed, you could do that here or canceled refund. You know, they give you a lot of different options right here. And then this is really powerful as well. So this is only going to show future appointments in this case. So as of recording this, it's uh, July 24th. So everything is going to show current right here because it hasn't happened yet. It's a future appointment. So let's say I go ahead and choose past appointments. Now it's going to show no data was found. So this is a really good case where you could have, you know, two different sections on your page, maybe upcoming appointments and past appointments. You can do it however you like. But in this case, let's just keep it at upcoming appointments right here. And if we go ahead and hit update, we can see how this looks on the front end of the website. And if you do a preview, you can see right here, it's just showing the listing grid right here. We have three columns. 
Now let's go ahead and change out this so it is maybe like a two column layout and change the color background. So if you wanna do that, just go back into your listing grid and underneath co columns number, so make sure that says two. As you can see right here, now it's gonna display a little bit better. So you can hit update and you could see on the preview that it's automatically going to change into two columns. So now if you wanna add a little bit of styling to break this grid up, you can do that pretty easily. What you do is on this page, just click this button here where it says edit listing grid item. That's automatically gonna bring you back into the listing grid. So you can always go ahead and make any changes to these fields right here. But in this situation, um, what I recommend is open up the navigator right here. Uh, you could do that with this button right down here. And if you click where it says section right here and you go over into that section style background type, let's go ahead and give it a white background so it stands out a little bit more here. And you could also, let's say, give it a little bit of a box shadow just so you could see it a little bit better. Let's go ahead and change that blur to be a little bit less. So something like that. And then you could always give it some padding. So in this case, let's just give it 20 padding and hit update. So when you update that, it's automatically going to update the listing grid on the front end. So now you can see if you go to this preview page, it's got a little bit of a drop shadow just so it stands out a little bit more right here. And that's it for this video tutorial on how to display user appointments with a listing grid widget. Thank you for watching.